Hello and welcome. Today I want to take this Dash Studio dog, convert its fur in Blender, and then import into Unreal Engine 5. We begin today with this character, Penny, inside Daz Studio. As you can see, Penny is a Chihuahua, and she contains a strand hair, if we have a look, fur coat. And it is Daz strand hair. We can turn off preview PR ha hairs here, and you can see the guides. Um, let's turn back on preview hairs, that's very important. And we're going to now export this fur. I'm going to export as an OBJ, and this will convert the fur to geometry. So let's give it a name. And here I'm going to set Daz Studio as the preset. I'm going to choose selected roots. And I want to collect maps and save. I'm going to do the same for the whiskers. Although I very much doubt I'll be using them today. And we'll name this whiskers. And I'm going to save with the same settings. Okay. Next, I need to export my body. I'm going to export this first as an OBJ. Let's name this Penny Body. And I'm going to save with the same settings again. And I'm going to delete my fur and hair now, just to avoid any problems, because I want to export my character as an FBX. So we'll name this Penny and use FBX. And for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm not going to export any morphs. Um, it'll just speed things up for me. I am going to collect the textures. Okay, let's jump over to Blender now. Okay, today I'm using Blender 3.64. I'm going to select everything in the scene and delete it. Next, I'm going to import my OBJs. And I want to keep the vertex order and polygroups. And there's my body first. And this is what it looks like. Next, I am going to import the whiskers. And finally, let's import our fur. Again, with the same settings. And there we go. We now have everything imported. I am going to delete the whiskers. Okay, I'm going to rename those body and fur. And next, we need to convert our geometry to curves. But I want to do a cleanup first, so I'm going to switch over to edit mode and clean and merge by distance, sorry. And now we're going to convert to curve. As you can see, this took two hours. So let's see if we can speed this up. What I'm going to do is go into edit mode and I'm going to break down my fur geometry. I'm going to select small parts of it and separate them from the mesh to create separate parts. Like so. And now this will leave us with lots of meshes or mesh parts for our fur okay so what i'm going to do now is just go through each part and i'm going to convert to curve 
for each part. This should speed up the process so we can do the conversion much quicker. Okay, we're now going to have to combine our curves into one curve again. And we're going to do this by selecting them all and, of course, doing Control J. And that's it. We now have a curve. Perfect. Next, we're going to convert it to Blender's new curve system. Convert to Curves. There we go. As you can see, it's already starting to look like fur. Next, I need to parent my fur to the body. So I'm going to select the body and the fur. Do control P. And select object. And as we can see, our fur is now a child of the body. OK, so next we need to create a material for our fur. So we create a new material with the fur selected and we'll just name this fur. OK, if we select body, we can see it has separate materials to our fur. That means that I have done it correctly. Right, next, select our curve data properties and in surface, choose our body. And for UV map, choose its UV map. OK, next, I want to go into sculpt mode for our fur and snap to nearest surface. This process will generate our missing root UV. Let's switch back over to object mode. We select our fur. And we're going to go to the shading tab to alter the material. First, I add an attribute node. And next, I add a image texture node. And I'm going to hook that up to the base color of our shader and the vector output of the attribute to the vector input of the image texture. Then I'm going to choose our body texture, which was imported when we imported our body. Next, in our attribute node, in name, we type surface underscore UV underscore coordinate. Make sure you get this right. It is not plural. It is coordinate. So that is surface. UV coordinate. And as you can see, the moment we did that, our fur now shares the same color as our body. Brilliant. In order to proceed and to make your life a lot easier, we're going to need a plugin for Blender. Let's go and get that now. Here it is. And here is the URL. It's available on Gumroad. You can get it for free, but please consider supporting the developer because it is a fantastic plugin that saves a lot of time and trouble. We need to install this plugin in the normal way in Blender. I will skip that and assume you know how to install Blender plugins. Here it is. OK, so now we have that plugin installed. If we come over here to the right, here is what it looks like. Pretty basic. And so if we select our fur. And scroll down and expand here. Here we have options and this is where we will put surface UV coordinates. Right, next we need to choose color. 
But as you can see, it is not here in the list. So we need to make some changes in our first data properties here. Click this little plus icon and add color. Click the plus icon again, click custom and in name, replace attribute with roughness. Click OK. That's it. So now we can go back and we can choose Chrome color. Color. For roughness, roughness. For width, we choose radius. And back in Groom Root UV, again, choose Surface UV Coordinate. Now we can export. Hit Button Export. I'm going to give it a name. Here in Scale, I have found during my experiments that I require one. You may require something different. So here I select one and simply hit Button Export. And that's it. Our groom hair has now been exported. Let's jump over to Unreal Engine 5 and convert this to groom hair. OK, the first thing I'm going to do is create a new project. It doesn't matter what kind of project you create. I'm creating a blank film and video project and I'm going to give it a name. And click create. OK, with our project open, I need to enable some plugins. I'm going to enable, I want to type groom and enable the Alembic groom importer and groom plugin. And I'm not going to restart just yet. What I want to do is import a metahuman from Quixel Bridge. The reason I do this is because it enables lots of settings that are useful for groom hair and it just saves time. So let's import a metahuman. It can be any metahuman, it's not important. I already have one downloaded and I'm going to export to my project. Okay, great. And now if I open my metahuman, I will get all these warnings about enabling missing plugins and settings. I'm going to do that right now. Right, with the project reopen, let us create a new folder and I'm going to call this Penny, which is my character's name. Then I'm going to import first the FBX file that I exported from Dash Studio and I'm going to use these settings. Use T0's reference pose and import morph targets, even though I didn't do any morph targets, and import normals and tangents. And that's it. And then, yep. Yeah. Okay, and then import. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is just a little bit of cleanup. And there we have it. Order out of chaos. Next. I'm going to do a quick save all and then I'm going to create a folder and call this groom and this is where our groom hair is going to go. I'm going to go into that folder and I'm going to import our Alembic file we exported from Blender. Here it is. And when we open it, we should have groom import options and it should say status file valid, attributes valid. The first thing I'm going to do is change the X axis of value to 90. In my experience, this is what is required. Yours may be different. And oh, before we continue here, look, it says root UV color roughness. So it's imported those attributes as well. That's great. That means you've done it correct. OK, so now here's our groom hair. It looks a little strange, so we do need to make some changes. First, I'm going to go to strands. Go to hair width and set the hair width to something a little lower. Uh, maybe 0 0.03 for now. See, it already looks better. Fantastic. 
and next I am going to right click and create a binding and under skeletal mesh I want to choose our character Penne here she is and create and click save that's that part next we need to create a material for our fur so I will name this Penny underscore hair and then I'm going to open that up and I'm going to first set this to hair in shading model and then I'm going to search for hair and enable use with hair strands okay next we I'm going to search for hair and I need to add a hair attributes node fantastic okay and then I want to add a texture 2d parameter here yeah. and we'll name this hair texture and I'm going to drag out of root UV into the UV of a hair texture node and out of RGB into base color. I will deal with roughness and specular later. Okay, let's do save. Okay, back in our main characters folder, I need to create an actor blueprint and I'm going to name this Penny BP. I'm going to open this up and under default scene root, I'm going to add a skeletal mesh and we'll call this Penny. And I'm going to choose our Penny Skeletal Mesh. William. I'm going to compile and save here. And then as a child of Penny, I want to find a groom. And we'll call this Fur. And for our groom asset, I will choose our penny fur asset. And for the binding, I will choose our binding asset that we created. I probably should rename this. For hair, we need to choose our hair, which is here, penny hair. We will deal with a material instance for this in a moment. Okay, so that's it. To ensure our hair stays attached to our body, I'm going to select Pen A Skeletal Mesh and type Skin. And Skin Cache Usage, I'm going to add an index. And under Index 0, I will do Enabled. I'm not entirely sure that's entirely correct, but it does seem to work. Anyway, compile and save and then a save all. OK, so far, so good. Right, we need to deal with the color of our fur now. So I'm going to open up our hair material. And you could just add your texture here, your fur texture. I don't want to do that. What I'm going to do is go to the folder and create a material instance. OK. I'm going to go back to my blueprint and for the hair material, I'll choose this instance. OK. And so if we open it up here, we can now enable hair texture and we can choose any texture we what we desire. For this, I'm going to choose our body texture. There we go. We've chosen the body color and there we go. With this now done, I'm going to just play around with settings until I get something I like. This is not a science when I do this. I just alter as many settings as possible until I get the desired result.
If you want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the thanks button underneath this video. Alternatively, head over to buymeacoffee.com and support me that way. More tutorials are on the way, but for now, could you please hit like and subscribe? I will see you in the next one.